Hello, my name is Allison Anderson. I'm an instructor here at UConn University. And today I'm going to be talking about chlorine dose, demand, and residual. So this is something that you need to calculate on operator certification exams. But before I jump into the calculations, I'm going to back up a little bit and explain what each of these concepts are, kind of in a practical, um, in a practical way that hopefully will make them make a little more sense once we start doing the, the calculations. So I'm going to draw a typical small system that we find here in the Yukon, where I live. A lot of our small systems have wells. So this is going to be my well pump down in the bottom of the well. Water comes up out of the well and into a water treatment plant. Inside the water treatment plant, we're adding chlorine. And that is our chlorine dose. These are your, your chlorine pumps. So if it's a sodium hypochlorite system, you've got your hypochlorite dosing pumps. If it's a chlorine gas system, you're injecting. Either way, you're getting chlorine dosed into your water. Then, you know, there might be some other treatment, some filters. And usually in our small systems goes into a couple of holding tanks, one for chlorine contact time, one for storage. And actually a lot of our communities here don't have piped water distribution systems. So a lot of our uh, water treatment plants fill uh, bulk water delivery trucks. So I'll do my best to draw a truck here outside getting filled. But for a pipe distribution system, it'd be the same thing. This would just be going out into the distribution system in your community. So if you were to take a chlorine residual test at this point, you would get a reading and this would be typical whether you're filling bulk water delivery trucks or if it's going into a distribution system, operators are taking chlorine residual tests all the time. And the units would be milligrams per liter, maybe parts per million PPM, that's equivalent to milligrams per liter. So let's just say the chlorine dosing pumps are dosing at a rate of 1.0 milligrams per liter or PPM, same thing. So this is what your chlorine pumps are programmed to do. They're always gonna be dosing one milligram per liter. Now, if you were the operator and you were taking your chlorine residual reading going into the truck, you might find that it has dropped to 0.4 milligrams per liter. This is your residual. So there's a difference here. You know your chlorine pumps are putting in one milligram for every liter of water, but in your distribution system, you only have 0.4 milligrams for every liter of water. So the difference here is what we call the demand. So there's a lot of different things in water that can use up chlorine. Uh, if you have iron in the water, that can react with chlorine and use up some of that chlorine. Um, the pathogens in the water also use up chlorine, other organics. There's lots of stuff. So all that stuff together, we call the demand. And it's the difference between the chlorine dose and the chlorine residual. So looking at it like this, you know, if we start with one and we're left with only 0.4, the demand is gonna be the difference between these two numbers. So if we go one minus 0.4, we get 0.6 milligrams per liter. So this is how the concept of chlorine dose, demand and residual works. You're adding the dose, you're left with the residual, and the demand is the difference, the part that's being used up. So if I wanted to write out what I just did in a mathematical formula, it would be chlorine demand equals chlorine dose minus chlorine residual. So chlorine demand is what I was solving for. I figured out that it was 0.6. 
Chlorine dose was given, so it was 1.0 milligrams per liter. And I subtracted the chlorine residual, which is 0.4 milligrams per liter. And I got 0.6. So if you like thinking about the formula and you want to me memorize the formula and use it, that's great. Maybe if a more visual representation will help you more on an exam, you can always do out a little sketch on the exam uh, like this as well. So this is how we calculate demand. I'm going to show you now how you would calculate residual. So say you didn't know what this was. You just got a problem that says you're dosing at 1.0 milligrams per liter. You know your system demand is 0.6 milligrams per liter. And it's asking you what is the residual. So we know we're starting with 1. 0.6 is being taken away. And what are we going to be left with? So this is why I like the visual a lot, because you know it's pretty intuitive. You're starting with 1. You're taking away 0.6. Your residual is going to be 0.4. But if we write this as a formula, now we want to know what chlorine residual is. And it's going to be chlorine dose minus chlorine demand. So in my simple example, my dose is 1.0 milligrams per liter. My demand is 0.6. 1 minus 0.6 is 0.4. So again, there's three different versions of this formula, whether you're solving for dose, demand, or residual. So you can memorize each of those three formulas or just kind of think about it um, from a visual perspective to solve these questions.